So I've had this bandsaw for a little bit over two years now, and it's time to make some upgrades to it. I'm not upgrading the machine, I'm just going to upgrade some of the parts on it to make it work a little bit better. After two years of working on this machine, putting it through its paces, I feel comfortable giving you guys my review of it. So if you are interested in purchasing this particular one, this is the 14BX from Laguna, hopefully this video will help you. I did an initial review over here if you want to check it out. I actually put this thing together twice in that video, so I'm pretty familiar with this machine here. As I mentioned before, this is the 14BX, and the BX on this machine indicates that there is a brake which allows you to press on a pedal near the floor and it'll slow down the blade once you finish your cut. At the time of purchasing the machine, it cost me 1400 bucks, and they do have a cheaper model which is the 1412. 1412 does not come with the brakes. However, I do think the brake is worth the investment. It's nice to be able to just stop the blade when you're done with the cut instead of having to wait until the blade stop. That can take a while. This one has a roughly 13 inches of resaw capacity. So I'm able to put a really big wide board here and resaw it, no problem. Those are some of the features that I looked into, especially the resaw capacity as well as the braking mechanism. And at the time of purchasing this machine, this was one of the more affordable machines that had a lot of good reviews out there. It does have two dust collection port. I am using a three horsepower um, two-stage dust collector and I have no issues with dust collection on this machine. Even though this is at the very end of my dust collection line, no problems at all. So if you're looking to buy a bandsaw, those are some features you want to look into. What are the capacities you need? Do you need a lot of depth? Do you need a lot of resaw capacity? I feel like in a single person shop like I'm in right now, working on mainly furniture pieces, um, sometimes doing built-ins, I honestly think a 14 is gonna be plenty for that. If you're into more resaw, doing logs, bigger chunks of material, maybe an 18 inch. But I think for most hobbyists, kind of weekend warriors, a 14 inch is gonna be plenty of capacity for pretty much anything that you'll throw at it. And so those are the things that I love about this machine. Let's go into some things that I think could be a little bit better, or at least you can make it so that it works a little bit better for you. The first thing I wanted to point out, and I don't know if it's just my machine that something like this is always happening, but the guide rail here, the bolt always comes loose for some reason. So I'm always having to like re-tighten it. Um, and I think it could be just because of the vibration of the machine that causes the bolts in the uh, rail to, to get loose. And also you can see here the measuring tape on the rail. I don't know why, but it, it got really beat up. Um, I think there was something that was stuck underneath the actual fence that kind of just eventually scrape it up. When I purchased this machine, it didn't come with the mobile base. That's an additional item that you have to buy. This type of mobile base, it's the one where there's two fixed wheels in the back and a swivel wheel in the front. So if you've ever worked with those, it's, it's not the best way to move the tool around. I believe Bora has a better system where all four casters would be able to swivel. The mobile base, it actually, I think was like 150 bucks or something like that. Honestly, just save your money, buy the casters from Bora or you can try to make your own or something. But yeah, just skip it. I wouldn't buy it at all. And in terms of stability, like it's honestly a hit or miss with this. My garage floor isn't that great. So if your floor is much more perfect, um, probably would work better. But in my garage, there's some cracks and stuff like that that I had to deal with. So for me, it does take a little bit more effort to actually stabilize this thing. Right now, it's not in the perfect location yet. I did have to move it around because I just got this drum center over here. So one thing I wanted to point out is inside here, this wheel, you guys see here, the tensioning gauge there, it's, it's, yeah, it's not accurate at all. So in the end, whenever I switch out the blade and do my upgrades, I'm going to show you how I actually tighten and uh, align my blades. I don't really use this anymore, and I, I don't think a lot of people use this gauge because it's not very accurate. Of course, there's a bolt back here that I can probably just tighten and get it right, but yeah, that's, that's that. <laughs> um, the last thing I want to point out is actually the thing that I absolutely hate the most about the machine, which is the guides. I don't know why, and again, it could be just my machine, 
Um, but the guides always come loose. At least once a month, it just comes loose. And it's not that I'm pushing hard on the machine. The tightening knobs itself, it just comes loose. These are the ceramic guides that came with the bandsaw. So I would just upgrade the machine, which I'm going to do right now, and I'll show you the product that I'm using. Bring you guys in a little bit closer. That's what happens whenever um, these things get loose. So we're gonna switch this out. So this is what I'm going to replace it with. So you guys can see this here has actual bearings, while this one, you guys see in there, that little white thing, this white dot right there, that's the ceramic. So hopefully this will solve my issue and uh, work out a little bit better. This is from Carter Products. Love their stuff. I use a lot of their stuff inside the garage. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this thing switched out. The first thing to do is remove the blade itself. The guides from Carter came pre-assembled, which is nice. All I had to do was remove the existing guides and the new one slid right in place. The lower guides were a little bit tricky because there wasn't enough space to tighten down the bolts. But other than that, it was pretty straightforward. Once the guides are in place, I'll go ahead and align the blades. To do that, I like to follow Alex Snodgrass method, which you can find the full details online. The first part of the process is to make sure that the deepest part of the gullet is centered on the wheel. Once I have it centered, I'll move the bearing so that it's right behind the gullets as well. Then I'll make the adjustments to my guides by sandwiching a piece of paper between the bearings and the blade. From there, I can tighten the bearings in place. This will make it so that the bearings won't continuously spin, which could cause them to go bad. But it's just enough space to keep the blade from drifting. All right guys, so that's pretty much it for the upgrade. I think this is gonna work way better than the ceramic guides. I'm hoping that it's not going to move on me. So if you guys are interested in learning more about this, I'll leave a link down in the description below. And if you do have any questions about this, leave them in the comments down below. A few accessories that I like to use with the bandsaw. Uh, one is this right here from Carter Products. These are just reference guides for you to stick up against your blade and uh, it will set the, the fence to the right Thickness, you're resawing or something like that. Definitely great to have a set of these and it just sticks magnetically onto the, um, the case here. And then there is this thing right here. It works similar to a feather board where it pushes the piece up against the, uh, the fence. So whenever I go to resaw, usually this is on there. Help me uh, guide that piece through. If it's a thinner piece, then I'll use this magnetic, uh, this is a mag switch right here, thinner pieces. I'll go ahead and use this. And since this is magnetic, it just sticks right up here. So now I'm gonna answer some of the questions you guys left over on Instagram. First one is from Edward Shin. Is there any tips for curved sawing? I cannot cut smoothly. So keep in mind, when you're using the bandsaw, it's not for finished work. You're gonna have some roughness in terms of the edge finish. If you wanna get a cleaner cut, then use a blade that has a higher tooth count. Also what I'll do is I'll cut up to the line, not on the line. That way it gives me a little bit of material to sand later on to give me a clean cut. Brian made it. What's up, Brian? He asked, what blade do you prefer and why? So in terms of blade, I haven't really come across a blade that's really good. I've used the Laguna Resaw King um, for a lot of the resaw work the last year or so, and it's always breaking on me. Um, it leaves a really good clean cut, but I can't really use it because it constantly just breaks at the seam. The good thing is Laguna does warranty it. Again, just double check the warranty, but if you break the blade within a year, they will send you a new one as long as it breaks on the seam. If it breaks anywhere else, you're out of luck. I loosened the tension on my bandsaw pretty much after use, so I released the tension on the blade. There's a lot of debate on whether that affects the blade or not, but that's how I learned to use it. So I always release the tension. And it could be just some quality control issues that they have to deal with, 
but until they fix it, I, I just can't recommend you use the Resaw King and it's expensive. Lately, I've been using some local shops here in Houston, Circle Saw, as well as sawblade.com. They do ship, so you wanna check them out. Um, they make their blades in-house. So far, sawblades.com and Circle Saw has been really good. This one right here is from Circle Saw. Cuts really nice. It does leave a little bit of a rough edge. That is to be expected with this type of resaw blade. So I usually leave a little bit of material so I can clean it up either on the planter jointer or now that I got the drum sander, I'll do that on the drum sander. For the thinner blades, I've been using uh, Timberwolves. Kongsi Chan asks, is it as sharp as Wolverine's claw? I mean, <laughs> Wolverine's claws are pretty sharp. This is pretty sharp too. If I were to have to choose, I think Wolverine's gonna win. W2 Woodshop asks, Honestly, your setup process, I have tried many others and I still get wild drift. The thing with drift is you wanna make sure that you're not pushing too hard. If you're pushing too hard, then you're gonna introduce drift. Don't force the material through the blade um, and also make sure that you're using the right blade as well. If you are going to resaw, use a resaw blade. If you're going to do curves, use a, a uh, thinner blade. HTX Custom Woodworking, which blade is best for which operation? I just answered that. Um, thinner blades curve, thicker blades with the uh, lower tooth count resaw. Alan builds, how long did it take to cut the first piece? Alan's referring to the video that I posted on Instagram. To resaw that first cut, it took about maybe uh, 30 seconds or so. It wasn't really a thick piece, pretty small, so it, this thing handled it just fine. House of Braxton WFS, I'd be curious what other band saws you compared to before in buying this one, and what was the main couple of reasons? I think I went over some of the reasons earlier in the video. The other machines that I looked into before purchasing this was the Grizzly and the Jet. Uh, with the Grizzly, the price point was really cheap, but there were so many bad reviews out there that I just didn't want to deal with it. And then the Jet, it was a little bit more expensive for the resaw capacity uh, for the floor standing model, so I just went with this one. There are recently some other machines out there. I'm thinking of Harvey that has really good quality. I haven't used Harvey personally, but other people say it's a really good machine. So um, yeah, look into Harvey as well. The last boomer 64, already ditched the ceramic guides after a year, can't wait to see the video. Yeah, so just get rid of the ceramic guides. I, I think I should have done that a lot sooner. Powberg works. I'm considering the 14 inch bandsaw with substantial resaw capacity and wondering if I'll be soon disappointed with a 14 inch model, how often has the capacity of the width of cutting room been an issue for, for you? Um, in terms of the width, how deep I can cut, it honestly hasn't been a big issue. I think, again, 14 inch is gonna be great for hobbyists, um, kind of like the amateur professionals. Yeah, the 14 inch is gonna be perfect. This, the resaw capacity, however, that's gonna be, um, really depends on what you're gonna do. I have honestly never really gone above 12 um, that often, maybe like a few projects where I might want a 24 inch wide um, book match panel. So that's where I would want a little bit more room if I'm going to do those wider panels, book match. I resaw mainly to get thinner pieces for projects um, or to save on material if I'm working with an eight quarter and I don't need the full eight quarter instead of going through the jointer and planer and, and just wasting all that materials, then I'll just resaw it to whatever I need, like one inch or something like that. 12 inch to 13 inch is gonna be my sweet spot. All right, so pretty much that is it. If I didn't cover anything, leave them down in the comments below and I'll definitely respond to them. Till next time guys in Biodesign Craft Workshop, see ya.